So I'm going to start a new series about Lagrangian mechanics. And I want to treat each of the topics using a variety of different tools. Uh, the center point of each topic is going to be the Lagrangian treatment that we're going to give an overview of in this video. But I also want to show you how each of these problems can be studied using Algo Do, using a tracker to do some video motion analysis, and finally using Python to study animations and graphs of the problem that we're interested in. And the Lagrangian mechanics is really going to be the center point of all of that. What that means is that each of these individual topics is going to take multiple episodes. So the Lagrangian series is going to be a series of mini series, if you will. So you don't have to watch them in order. Uh, you can watch one mini series and another mini series in any order you want. It probably makes sense to watch the episodes within the mini series in order, but you don't necessarily have to. But what I want to do in this video is give you an overview of how Lagrangian mechanics works because that's the thing we're going to be using multiple times. So to start out in a Lagrangian problem, you start by defining the Lagrangian. We're going to use a script L for that just because it's a fancy uh, functional. It's not just a function, it's a function of functions, so it's called a functional. This thing is always going to be defined as the kinetic energy T minus the potential energy V. Uh, your textbook might use different symbol for these. This is the symbols that I was raised on, so this is just it, it doesn't really matter what the symbols are, but it's got to be the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. So the Lagrangian, it's a special combination of energies. It's not the total energy. It's just a special combination, T minus V. And this is the thing that makes the uh, Lagrange's equation work. Now, the thing we have to think about with the Lagrangian and the potential energy and the kinetic energy is that they're all functions of what we call generalized coordinates. So this thing Q, uh, we're going to call this a generalized coordinates. When we say generalized coordinates, what we mean is that these are uh, these, these might be position variables or they might be uh, angle variables or they might be some weird combination of the two. It's a generalized idea of where the thing is in time that you're studying. So it could be x, y, z. It could be r, theta, phi. Uh, it could be any set of coordinates. And that's the beautiful thing about Lagrangian mechanics is that it works for any combination of coordinates that you're using. So then the each, uh, uh, each generalized coordinate is going to have a velocity q dot that's going to be dq dt. And I am, I'm normally not too careful about whether I have full derivatives or partial derivatives, but I am going to be careful about that here because it does make a difference whether something is a full derivative or whether it's a partial derivative. What Lagrange's equation says is that for each one of these generalized coordinates, so however many generalized coordinates you have, you get to write one Lagrange's equation. Uh, Lagrange's equation has two sides to it. On the left hand side, we're going to have a partial of L with respect to Q dot. Now I know that looks funny having a derivative there in the denominator of another derivative, right? But the way you think about it is that you treat this Q and Q dot as independent variables. So what we have to do with these two is treat them as independent variables. Let me get my text box big enough there. There we go. So we have to think of Q and Q dot as if they're independent variables. Yes, they are functions. They are both functions of time. And T and V are functions of them. And L is a function of T and V. So that's why we're getting into this functional business. That's why it's very important that we have this partial derivative here is so that we have uh, this, this, this function of a function going on. So in other words, when you're taking a derivative of DL DQ dot you're going to ignore all the Q's, right? You're going to treat Q and Q dot just like you would if you were taking a derivative with respect to X and a derivative with respect to Y. You, when you're taking a derivative with respect to Q, you're going to leave Q dot alone. Anything with Q dot is considered a constant. Um, same thing in reverse. When we take a derivative with respect to Q dot, we're going to treat anything with Q. We're going to treat that Q as a constant. Now, this piece here gets one other operation done to it. We're going to take a full time derivative of this. Right? So you notice that you've got a partial derivative here and you've got a full derivative over here. So in here you're just taking a derivative with respect to Q dot. 
you're ignoring the cues, you're treating them as constants, but here you are treating everything that's a function of time as a function of time. On the right hand side, there's going to be one more partial derivative, partial of L with respect to Q. Right. So on the left hand side, you've got a derivative with respect to velocity. And on the right hand side, you've got a derivative with respect to the position. And so you're, you're doing a derivative with respect to each, but you're putting them on separate sides. And it's only the DL DQ dot that gets the full time derivative. This side does not get the full time derivative. So in terms of the units, this DT cancels out with the units of the one over DT here in the denominator. And so it all works out there. And that's one way you can remember how to do Lagrange's equation is that all the time derivatives are on one side of the equation. The other side of the equation has no time derivatives. Why don't we try a quick example just to show you how this works. Let's suppose I have a ball, it's got a mass m, and it's just gonna fall under the influence of gravity. You know what the answer to this is. The position is gonna be a quadratic. So my generalized coordinate q is going to be y. That's all I'm worried about is the motion in the vertical direction. So that means my q dot, my generalized velocity, is just gonna be the y velocity, y dot there. So what that means is my kinetic energy is going to be one half m v squared, so one half m y dot squared, right? The, the, the half the Lagrangian problem is just setting up the potential energy and the kinetic energy, and then the problem kind of solves itself with a little bit of calculus along the way. Uh, that also means that my potential energy is going to be m g y, just like you would normally have in a kinematics problem. Okay, so let's set up our Lagrangian. So our Lagrangian is going to be t minus v. So one half m y dot squared minus m g y, right? So I take my uh, kinetic energy here, subtract off my potential energy, right? So my potential energy is normally positive. When I think about increasing y, I think about increasing v. And so I'm subtracting that off here. So it's going to be negative over here. Okay, let's set up uh, the left-hand side of the Lagrange's equation. So my left-hand side would be d by dt of the derivative of this thing with respect to y dot. So remember, let's come back over here. You're taking d by dt of partial of L with respect to q dot. In this case, q is my y. And so I'm going to take a derivative of this thing with respect to y dot. So I just treat y dot like it's a variable. I know it looks funny because it has a dot over it. The dot means a time derivative. Um, but we just treat that y dot like it's its own variable. So I would just do the power rule, right? I would drop this two down, that'll cancel with this two. So I have a one out front. My mass is a constant. And then you just have a y dot to the first power because I'm just demoting that two to a one. It's just your regular uh, power rule, just like you're accustomed to in calculus class. And then the other piece, need to erase that to help illustrate this. Um, the other piece, is taking uh, the derivative of this respect to y dot, but there is no y dot in this term, right? So remember, you're treating y and y dot like independent variables, so this just becomes minus zero. Cool, we have one more step on the left-hand side. So I had d by dt of m y dot. Well, I know that m is a constant, so m is gonna come out front. So I just need to take the derivative of y dot, that's gonna be the acceleration y double dot. Again, each one of these dots means a time derivative. So uh, two dots means two times derivatives, which means d squared y dt squared. I could even write that out here, m uh, d squared y dt squared. We use the dots um, to differentiate from, no pun intended, to differentiate from the primes that you use when you've got dy dx. So a prime usually means a derivative with respect to x, and a dot usually means a derivative with respect to t. All right, now we got to set up the right-hand side. Remember, the right-hand side is the partial of L with respect to q. So this is going to be dl dy, right? So I'm going to look over here at my y's. So this first piece has no y. It has a y dot, but y dot is different from y. So that'll be a zero minus, then I have my uh, derivative of this respect to y. Again, power rule is just going to make this an mg. So now all I do is set the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, all right? So I set the left-hand side m acceleration going to equal negative mg. Oh, look, those m's cancel just like they always did back in good old physics one. And so I have my acceleration equals negative g. But that's what you already knew. You already knew it was going to accelerate down with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And so now I can just solve this like a normal 
uh, a differential equation, and I can get that y equals y0 plus uh, v0 times t minus 1 half gt squared, just like you've always had it before. But now it's coming from this much more powerful Lagrange's method, where I can put in any kinetic energy, any potential energy that suits my problem, and I can get out a similar equation of motion for this. So our goal is gonna to be to go from the Lagrangian into Lagrange's equation and get out an equation of motion like this, which we can then plug into a computer and have it solve for us.